Fellow Earthlings, I found some new information about the French invasion at the Belgian border. I'll cover this in my recap. For more details, you can check the previous videos. So, here's a quick recap. It's the middle of June and Prussian cavalry patrol the area. It's 3 a.m. and the Mont charges outpost near Lop. Pajol, Domont and Van Damme lead a charge against Turin. Attacks on Amsurheur, Marcinel, Couillet, Marcienne and Châtelet follow. The Prussians need to hold the French back or a lot of Prussian troops including Steinmetz Brigade will be cut off. General Perch manages to hold the French at bay at the vital bridges of Marcienne, Marcinel and Châtelet, winning precious time for Blucher whose forces are scrambling into position at Sombref. 11 a.m. Chalois is taken. You can find the Battle of Chalois in my previous video. There is chaos and delays at the Chalois bridge and the French need to cross on different bridges, losing precious time and with the risk of being attacked. It's 2 p.m. Birch Brigade blocked the road to the town of Gilly with 10,000 men at his disposal. Grouchy, part of Pajol and Exelmont's cavalry corps, pursued Perch 6th and 28th Infantry and 2nd Westphalian Landwehr Cavalry and Foot Battery to Gilly. Van Damme's corps will provide support, but is still too far away. Napoleon had to use the Imperial Guard in his absence to keep the momentum going. 5 p.m. Van Damme's corps arrives exhausted because they marched double time 40 kilometers in intense heat. An assault on Ransard begins to pressure the Prussians' right flank at Gilly. Ransard is taken, exposing the Prussian right flank at Gilly. Grouchy and Napoleon scout the area near Gilly in person. 5.15 p.m. Napoleon organizes his troops for the coming assault. Napoleon's right flank consists of Berth and Bonnemain's Dragoon Brigades, who are part of Stroll's 9th Dragoon Division. Unfortunately, there are no pictures available of Bonnemain and Stroll's. By the way, cuirassiers are equipped with armor and firearms. Van Damme is in the center, with Le Fol's 8th and Bertizen's 11th Infantry Divisions, mainly young guards. Ansel's 4th and Supervis 5th Light Cavalry Division will provide support. Also a column of the Old Guard marches to the front line, joining the center. Skirmishers form the left flank as they advance towards some cover. We got Pajol with one or two light cavalry divisions protecting the skirmishers from a possible attack. Le Thor Old Guard Ragoon Regiment acts as a reserve force. Napoleon's former bodyguards, but they grew in size and they became a separate unit. We got Napoleon's daughters in abundance and on the right Axelmont with Stroll's 9th and Chessel's 10th Ragoon divisions with horse battery. We got skirmishers at Perch's right flank. More skirmishers and fusiliers that are part of the 28th Infantry Regiment here. The 6th Fusilier Infantry Freikorps Division was in the center. By the way, there aren't a lot of Prussian pictures available. By the way, a Freikorps mainly consisted of military volunteers. The remaining Fusilier Battalion of the 28th Infantry Regiment is in the woods. We got Ragoons in front and Brandenburger Dragoons behind them. And on the outer left flank some more Dragoons. By the way, these Dragoons were equipped with curved sabers and carbines. We got artillery in the back within a reserve Uhlans in front, Landwehr cavalry in the middle and Hussars in the back. Cavalry reinforcements will come in from here during the battle, also acting as a reserve force. 6 p.m. French assault begins, a couple hours later than planned. French batteries fire. Russian batteries reply. Skirmishers engage each other. French infantry advance in Echon, supported by dragoons in the center. On 
over Gundergate, charge Birch left flank unnoticed due to the terrain low grounds and breakthrough. However, Birch cavalry reinforcements charge, the French dragoons and their momentum is halted. Epic cavalry clashes follow. Hooves clatter in the mud, carbines are being fired and sabers and lances clash. French skirmishers took the upper hand and pushed back the Prussian skirmishers at the Abbey of Solemont. By the way, skirmishers act as separate units, finding cover and sniping their targets carefully, harassing enemies that are for example deploying or firing at close-packed enemy ranks to disrupt the main enemy force and preventing enemy skirmishers from doing the same. Birch receives orders to retreat to Fleury. The Prussians begin their coordinated retreat slowly. Napoleon is frustrated. Yet another indecisive battle? No way. He sends Latour's Gorse cavalry to the front. Birch's troops hold on bravely as a cohesive retreat continues. French advance slowly. Because all roads are barricaded with, for example, trees that the Prussians cut down as a gift for the French. Other roads are entrenched or covered with mud. Basically, every major road is rendered unusable. The Prussians retreat toward Fleury. Blucher could use more time at some breath for his other car to assemble. But, due to overwhelming French forces, Birch needs to retreat. He does this as slow as possible, winning time for Blucher. Peugeot joins Latour in the pursuit of the Prussians. A lot of Prussian cannons were taken by the French infantry. The battles for Ligny and Quatre Bras will soon begin. But that is for another time. Thank you for watching.